Praise the Lord, all ye saints. Praise the Lord. Just a little update. Uh, love the Bible signs. Praise the Lord. Uh, pray for me to have a lot of favor with Uber. Lately, um, I've had uh, been singing worship songs to people, and it seems like uh, that is a good way to also witness. So, you know, we witness in many different ways. Definitely Bible signs, the scriptures facing people. It's always good for people to see, you know, what the scripture says. See somebody who's unashamed to sing songs. Uh, praise the Lord. Going to update you on uh, some things that are happening. And I think violence is, you know, the spirit of iniquity is coming more and more. It's in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And uh, it talks about it's a mystery, the mystery of the spirit of iniquity. And so it's another part of the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ is at the end of days, there is a lot of violence and a lot of lawlessness and a lot of false prophets, false Christ, false anointed, and all of these things that we see Jesus told us about. Praise the Lord. And we can sing praises to him all the time. He restores the joy of our salvation. He is so good. Praise the Lord. We can enter the holy of holies. Praise the Lord. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. Praise the Lord as born again believers. He restores the joy of our salvation. Praise the Lord. People might say evil things about you or against you or, you know, people say sometimes, oh, you're preaching. You're not preaching the right way or whatever. And, uh, you know, you can just trust in the Lord that he has established you to preach. And praise the Lord, praise the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised day and night, night and day, for he is worthy. So let's see, let me just figure out how to do this. Just going to show you some clips and the violence is definitely coming. The bombs will start happening eventually. Martial law will go into effect eventually. You know, I'm not a, a Trump fan. I'm a Jesus Christ fan. Be born again of the spirit of God. But Trump posted on social, truth social that we're now like more of a dictatorship. And he might be right there. Um, we're in the very last days where you must be born again of the Spirit of God. And I'm going to read to you some of Jude, but first I'm going to show you what's happening in the United States. You know, I feel really bad for Gaza right now, you know, because all this stuff is prophesied to happen. And, uh, you see Gaza, you see little boys and you see little girls and they're underneath rubble. And, you know, most of uh, Israel that's occupying right now, uh, Zion, the, the political Zion, is not the true Israel. There's only a remnant of Israel. So it grieves me when I see people trying to force Israel down everybody's throats. You know, we do know that in Zechariah chapter 12 through 14 that there is, there is a remnant that cries out to the Lord. Uh, the spirit of supplication and grace is poured out and they cry out for, for the Lord, their Messiah. And they mourn for a father as a, as a father mourns for their firstborn. And they realize that he is the Messiah, the one that they pierced Israel. And we see that there's a lot of bloodshed. So this is already prophesied in the Bible. We see the spirit of iniquity uh, in Second Thessalonians 2. Mystery of the spirit of iniquity. And so as born again believers, we're contending for the faith because we see that there's a great falling away. We see that uh, Jesus warned that many are going to think they're saved and not make it into the kingdom of God for practicing sin. And in these last days, when you're preaching the Bible directly, it raises up, you know, uh, false, t false people will come against you saying that you're not doing it right. What do we do? We stick up the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart from the enemy. And we say it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, it is written, praise the Lord. And so what I'm really also getting at is since violence is definitely coming to the streets, it's already right now and I'll show you um, next year is going to be even worse with the elections and uh, and any time bombs could start going off uh, in the United States. Any time. Um, I'll show you something else about the FBI. The FBI and Congress are, are saying a lot of things which make me think that that a false flag could also happen soon. Give me a second to log in. I'm going to have to praise the Lord Jesus. You know what? While I'm doing that, I'm just going to show you 
That's what I'm talking about. But here's another thing I want to say before I start showing you. Is God's weeding out things right now so that the final remnant of the street preachers that are out there, and there's so many, there's many good solid street preachers out there. And they're always out there in front of the bars, in front of the concerts, just out on the streets. I can't wait to be out there again myself, preaching the word as it is written. And so God is weeding out everything right now because the last remnant is going to take on a lot of violence and we're going to represent his name right instead of wrong. We don't want to bring shame to the name of Jesus who pulled us out of darkness. So as this violence increases and attacks happen to even street preachers and attacks start happening on our streets, uh, make sure that you're in the faith. Make sure that you're no longer practicing sin. Make sure that you're uh, that the Spirit of God bears witness that you are a changed individual. Romans Romans 8 talks about the Spirit of God bearing witness with our spirit. And see, when we cry out to the Lord, He answers us, and, and He restores the joy of our salvation. So make sure that's you. Make sure you're doing the will of God. But here, check out what's what's happening. Some pretty incredible footage coming out in the past 72 hours. And what you are witnessing is not taking place in the Middle East or in the Gaza Strip, but right here in the United States, in cities like New York, Chicago, New Orleans, on U.S. soil, there are protests and attacks taking place. And what we're hearing is that this will intensify, that this war is nowhere near done, Israel has said. And just the other day, I let you know that we had heard from the foreign minister for Iran who warned the United States that if this war continues, that the United States would not be spared from their fire and that there is concern that a lot of the people that could attack us here on U.S. soil are already here and have already made their way through the southern border. Now, in addition to that, I just shared with you yesterday the breaking news, literally hours after it had taken place, that in Russia, an airport was overtaken by pro-Palestinian protesters, and they went out onto the runways and were going from plane to plane seeking out Jewish refugees. And now we're hearing that refugees coming here to the United States are saying they are concerned about their safety, even being here on U.S. soil. They do not feel safe with what's taking place. Now, I'm going to share with you the latest video footage coming out on this, and I want to warn you, it is intense. However, I do believe that knowledge is power, and we need to know what is going on. And if you appreciate the updates, keeping you up to speed on everything taking place, do me a favor, smash the like button, just takes a second. And if you want to stay up to date, it's totally free. Why not hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. I cite all the sources, put them on the screen, put them in the description so you can see it for yourself. And if you'd like to support this channel, I'll actually add a member section and join and just start citing the sources so that way they can pop up on your YouTube feed if you like that as well. But you guys, let's dive into the video footage and the articles so you can see exactly what's been happening here in the United States in the past 72 hours. And let me know your thoughts. Are we safe here? Let's go ahead and take a look and get you caught up on the latest. Here's some video footage. You're looking down at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. This is Flatbush Avenue where you can see a large rally that was uh, labeled Flood Brooklyn for Gaza, a uh, pro-Palestinian group. It's a long line of people. And so far, a relatively peaceful march as they make their way along Flatbush Avenue. <laughs> So that's right here, right now, you know, in the United States. That's what's going on in our own country right now from this Israel stuff. So I'm having a hard time getting using this. So I'm just going to finish by reading some of Jude that we're supposed to contend for the faith. You know, when a man is full of the Holy Spirit and he's living for the Lord, you know, in the book of Acts, we see that they were sent out to preach. And 
that's how the word goes forward. In Romans 10, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they have one unless they be sent? So we're sent to go preach, you know, and as, as we see the last days upon us and we see, you know, what Jesus said, the love of many is going to grow cold because lawlessness increases and iniquity abounds. And all the things I mentioned before this about false prophets, false anointeds. And he says, well, I find faith when I return. And he says, it's going to be like the days of Lot, which is Sodom and Gomorrah and the days like Noah, you know, when uh, God wiped everything out with the flood. And so we see that and we see, uh, you know, the, the foolish virgins were the ones who were banging on the door and they said, Lord, let us in. And he says, I know you not, you know, so they weren't ready. They didn't have oil. Um, we see Matthew 7, 21 through 23, that many are going to say on that day, Lord, Lord, we prophesied, we cast out devils. We did many wonderful works in your name. And he's going to say to them, depart from me. I never knew you, ye that work iniquity, sin, lawlessness, Matthew 13, 41 through 43, at the end of the age, the Son of Man will send out his holy angels to reap out of his kingdom all who offend and practice sin, iniquity. Praise the Lord. So we want to be doing the will of the Father. We want to be buying from Jesus gold, tried in the fire, and have our lamps lit, and uh, have a soft heart, and contend for the faith, you know, and warn people when they're speaking against the Word of God in, you know, in churches, on the streets. And do it lovingly so that they will hear what the Word of God actually says. Because a lot of people have uh, man's doctrines and doctrine, and they, they preach man's doctrines. And Jesus said in Matthew, I think it's 15, he said, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Now why? He told us, because they're teaching the doctrines and precepts of men. So they make the Word of God of no effect, Jesus said. They make it powerless. In 1 Corinthians 1, we see that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to we who are being saved, it's the power of God. And the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. If we try to bring in the wisdom of this world and add it to the word of God, it takes the power away from the cross of Christ. It says that in 1 Corinthians 1, and that we are supposed to be speaking the same thing, all the same mind, according to as it is written in the scriptures. You know, and if we do that, we are, we're abiding in the word and the words abiding in us in John 15, and we can ask anything in Jesus' name, and the Father hears us, and, he's, and it's his good pleasure to answer us. So, I mean, we have all these promises of persecution, we have these promises of blessings, and uh, so we're contending for the faith. And I'm going to finish this with Jude. And he says, one chapter, very end of the Bible, Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ. So that's truly, if you're born again of the Spirit of God, you are a bondservant of Jesus Christ. Romans 6 talks about, shall we go on in sin, that grace may abound? God forbid, how can we who have, who have died to sin live any longer therein? And so now what are we? We're slaves of God. He's, he says, I'm a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. To those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Contend for the faith. Be loved. While I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once and for all delivered to the saints. See how it says the saints? The Bible calls born-again believers saints, to the saints at Corinth, to the saints at Colossae, to the saints at Philippi. Uh, Peter talks about us being divine partakers, holy brethren. Uh, Titus chapter 2, the grace of God has appeared to all men unto salvation, teaching us to deny ungodliness, to deny worldly lust, to live soberly, to live righteously in this present age, looking for that blessed hope, Jesus Christ. Um, and, it, and it tells us that he is zealous for us to make us a peculiar people, a redeemed from all iniquity, and that we would be zealous for good works. And so we're called saints, divine partakers, people that say that we're all still sinning every day, they're violating scriptures, they're taking the power away from the word of God, and they're giving it to the devil. That's seriously what they're doing, because the word of God tells us that we have overcome in 1 John 2, we've overcome by our faith, 
you've overcome the wicked one by your love for the brethren. I write that you sin not, 1 John 2. So we see this, and we see love not the world, neither the things that are of the world, neither the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. These are not of the Father, they are of the world, and the lust thereof are fading away, but he who does the will of God will abide forever. Praise the Lord. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. It's handed down to the saints. Okay, now here's why we're contending for the faith. First of all, we're called saints, not sinning every day. Okay, First John chapter 3 says, little children, be not deceived. He who practices righteous is righteous as he is righteous. He who practices sin is of the devil. And this, by this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest, are, are proven. Who, who is doing righteousness, who's following Jesus, who's denying themselves, picking up the cross, following Jesus, proclaiming the glorious gospel, doing the will of the Father, proclaiming Jesus and the second coming. First, second coming, the whole counsel of God's word is what born again believers are called to do as you mature in the faith. As you become mature and you see what the scriptures are saying because you're being obedient to them. Jesus became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. In Hebrews 5, 9, Acts 5, 32, the Holy Spirit's given to those who obey. See, all these scriptures I'm giving to you are, are for born again believers who are full of the Holy Ghost. They understand, they hear this and they're quickened by it because it's powerful. The Bible says the word of God is quick and active, powerful and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing soul and spirit dividing bones and marrow. It's a discerner of the heart and the thoughts. Everything is laid bare before whom we must give an account. That's the word of God. If you're born again, it's quickening you. Jesus said in John 6, 6, 3, his words are spirit and everlasting life. So the whole counsel of God's word for a born again believer is talking about the Holy Ghost. It's talking about all the gifts of the spirit. It's talking about enduring sound doctrine, uh, uh, staying in the faith. And part of that is reproving, rebuking, exhorting with all long suffering by the word of God. Preach the word. Because the word of God is good to convince, to exhort, to, to rebuke, all of this. So that men will hear what sound doctrine is. And he says in 2 Timothy 4, but, but men, but in the final times, men will not endure sound doctrine. But they will heap up for themselves. They will turn their ears away from the truth. And they will turn their ears to Falsehood, false teachers, according to their own ungodly lusts. So anybody saying when you're preaching this full counsel of God's word that you're preaching, you know, you're not preaching the gospel right? Something's wrong with them because you love all the word of God. And especially in this age now where we have all those scriptures warning men will not endure sound doctrine. And we, we see the, the violence and we see false Trump prophets last couple of years and we see, uh, revival by the same false prophets. You know, well, let's get back to Jude because that's what this is all about. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. So that means that they are condemned. They're going to hell. That's what that means. Ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness. Another version says, KGV says lasciviousness. I'm reading for New King James. And through these actions, they deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what happens when false teachers come in and they take the grace of God and they turn it into a license to what? Watch porn? Are you kidding me? Ephesians 5 says you will not inherit the kingdom of Christ. Uh, listen to wicked music. Are you kidding me? Ephesians 5 covers that. So many other scriptures cover that. Coarse jesting, uh, lewdness, all of these things. Let it not even be named among the who? The saints. Yeah, the saints, not the sinners. Uh, again, on the sinner thing, uh, this topic of calling us sinners every day. Well, are you still under the law? Because First uh, Timothy 1 says the law is good for the sinner and the profane and the unholy and the men stealer and the whoremonger and all these things. And anyone not in sound doctrine, that's what the law is good for, to show people the, the, the truth. Okay, so praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. And so Jude goes into explaining the Old Testament and the New Testament. He's saying the Old Testament, uh, old and new apostates. So people have rejected the faith from the Old Testament. There was a remnant in the Old Testament, and it's happening in the New Testament. All you have to do is be born again of the Spirit of God to see the kingdom of God, which Jesus said you must be. 
John 3.3, 3, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. And now you can see his parables. And you see that, you see why he's saying, you see that people uh, don't endure sound doctrine and they're not ready for the Lord Jesus. And then there are the zealous remnant that is ready that's crying out in the streets. Okay, so what we see, be, but I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, under darkness for the judgment of the great day, the great and terrible day of the Lord, it's called, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these, he's talking about false teachers, speak evil of whatever they do not know. So think about that. If you're, tra if you're going down all kinds of rabbit holes, let's say, or you're just going into places where there's a lot of lies mixed in, and you're speaking evil of what they don't even fully understand. That's what that's saying right there. And whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them! For they have gone the way of Cain. So, so what's the way of Cain? Well, in 1 John, it says that we love the brethren. We're supposed to love all people, but especially the brethren, the, the born-again saints. And not like that wicked one, Cain, who slew his brother because his works were righteous. So in these last days, you have people calling the righteous evil and making things up about them. And that's hate. There's hate in their heart. And they, they, a lot of them, I don't think, can see it because the Bible talks about Blindness, you know, they're spiritually blind, they're going blind. Well, it's hateful when you say evil things about people, questioning their salvation. That's hateful to say that about somebody who's saved. That's like the way of Cain. Okay, and then there's these other ones who have run greedily in the error of Balaam for profit and perished in the rebellion of Korah. So the error of Balaam for profit, Second Peter 2 talks about this as well. And so we also see it in Revelation chapter 2 where Jesus is judging the churches. And the way of Balaam is forsaking the right way and being given over to fame and fortune. And don't we see that a huge problem in the last days as it's mentioned three times in warnings at the very end of the Bible. And so uh, you can be a prophet of God as we see in Matthew chapter 7 prophesying in, in, in God's name, in Jesus' name. You can cast out devils. You can start off well in the faith, but you can forsake the right way. That's what it's telling you, okay? And we see that. We see people partnering with rock stars, and we see partnering with all manner of things. The Pope, just you name it. LGBT, there's just so much apostasy where the Bible is handed over. The scriptures are handed over to music awards, Dove awards, to uh, to pharmakia, to uh, to uh, rock stars, all this, the Pope, the Mormon Jesus on TV, this where they blaspheme the Word of God, and they send you to a Catholic app. So rebuking this is what you're supposed to do. I don't care if you're Calvary. I don't care if you're uh, John MacArthur. When you speak against the Word of God and you join things that are false, men of God need to say that is falsehood. What are you doing? And in the process, there will be contentions. It's, it's, the Bible says that there must be contentions so that, you know, we will see who's truly approved of God. This isn't something that you just make a profession of, of I'm a believer, and then you're not in a spiritual war. This is a spiritual war. That's why Jesus said in Luke 14, count the cost all the way to the end to be his disciple. In Matthew 24, 13, he said, whoever endures to the end shall be saved. Praise the Lord, okay? So then Jude starts to tell us more and more how, how these people that are becoming reprobate unto every good work, we see people that, you know, when they stop. Uh, First uh, Timothy chapter 4, the Holy Spirit expressly states that in latter days some will depart from the faith. What happens? They give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now what, what does it say after that? They have their conscience seared as with a hot iron. 
Now, what does it say after that? They speak lies and hypocrisy. Okay, so you will know them by their fruits. A good tree will produce good fruit. A bad tree will produce bad fruit. Every tree that does not produce good fruit will be hewn down and cast into the fire. Matthew 7, verse 19. John 15, we see the same thing. If you abide in Jesus, he is the vine, we are the branches. The Father purges all that are in Jesus so that what? We will bear more fruit. Apart from Jesus, we can bear no fruit. We have to abide in Jesus, abiding in the word. If we abide in the word, we can ask anything in the Father's name, in Jesus' name, and the Father will answer. And our joy will be full, okay? But if we do not abide, we're like a, we're like a branch that withers and it gets cut off and thrown in the fire. Obviously not once saved, always saved. Praise the Lord. And what we see here in Jude is we see that these people, they will hang out with you. It says these are spots in your love feast while they feast with you without fear. So you see a problem is when people don't fear God and they speak things evil about people and they question people and they question and, and it's their walk that they need to really examine. Okay, what well, we see, we see false prophets prophesying about Trump over and over and over. They have no fear of God. And when these things don't come to pass, their, their conscience is seared as well. The hide iron is speaking lies and hypocrisy, and they don't seem to have fear of God. But yet they're hanging out. See? Serving only themselves. So that's what it comes down to. If they're only serving themselves, see, see we're supposed to be bond servants of Jesus Christ. Serving the whole body of Christ. We are here to serve not be served, just like Jesus showed us, right? So we're, we're going to serve. We're going to be long-suffering. We're going to stick up the shield of faith when people say evil things, and we're going to forgive them, and uh, we're going to ask for God for wisdom. Okay, now what, is it, what does it say? It says they are clouds without water. So these people, they make a lot of empty noise, but they have no power. And they're carried about by the winds. Remember, there's another scripture that says, don't be blown around by every wind of doctrine, they're, they're blown around by the winds this way, that way. Late autumn trees without fruit. What happens when you're without fruit? We just said it. John 15, you're a branch that withers. It gets cut off from the vine. Matthew 7, verse 19. If you're not bearing good fruit, it's going to be hewn down. So you see, this is also showing it's not once saved, always saved. If you have the Spirit of God, you can understand this. They are trees without fruit, twice dead. So what does Ephesians say? It says we were all once dead in our trespasses until the word of God enlightened us and quickened us. Okay, we're, we go from death to life, right? So if we fall away, we're twice dead. It's what it's saying here. Pulled up at the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars of whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Okay, and we have Second Peter 2 that also talks about as Christ, so for actually First Peter 4 says as Christ suffered for us. So we look to Christ, how he suffered for us, and we arm ourselves with the same mind. And it says, he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So this video that's showing you the violence, it, it, it's showing you that violence is coming and we've been prophesying that it's coming for a while. Most people that know the word of God and know, you know, have a spiritual sense of an understanding of what's coming. So now it's time to resist sin unto bloodshed. That's how, you know, you haven't resisted sin unto bloodshed. And so there's people that are just falsely prophesying. They're avoiding any persecution. And this is what it's saying. They're wondering stars and they just mouth great swelling words. We see now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, God, and his people. Apostates predicted... These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth, they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. Yeah, I was reading Job, and he, he's saying that I don't use flattering speech to gain, gain an advantage. So when you see, you know, warnings about false teachers, often they use flattering speech to gain advantage. But you, beloved, so this is where we, beloved, 
Remember the words that were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there will be mockers in the last time who will walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. Maintain your life with God, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some, have compassion. And on others, save with fear. Pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Glory to God. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blessings in Jesus' name. God bless you, sister. Just a short video. Have a blessed day in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, praise the Lord. Hallowed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Every name. Been singing this in my Uber. The Lord shall be saved. Oh. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Praise the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are safe. Yahweh, the God who is. Adonai, Lord and Master. Hail you, the Most my God, Elohim, Supreme God. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. El Roy, the God who sees. El Gibor, mighty God. El Shaddai, you're sufficient for all my needs. Yahweh Shalom, the Lord our peace. He who dwells in the shadow of the Most High. Oh. In the shadow of the Almighty, I will rescue him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. I will let all my goodness pass before, and I will declare to you my name. Praise the Lord, Lisa. God bless. The Lord, our shepherd, Yahweh Nisi, the Lord, our banner, Jehovah Zikene, the Lord, our righteousness, Yahweh says, the Lord of hosts. Jehovah. 
on the Shama. The Lord is present. Adonai Eloheinu, the Lord our God. Praise the Lord, huh? Jehovah Hosseinu, the Lord our Maker. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our Healer. Wonderful. Counselor, mighty God, Father, Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords, Emmanuel, Yeshua, Savior. Praise the Lord. God bless you guys in Jesus' mighty name.